Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner covering section 4.13 of Griffith's uh, Introduction to Electrodynamics, second edition. Um, if you have any questions, you can add a, uh, a video response below. Uh, be sure to, or you can comment, of course. Be sure to like and share with your friends if you appreciate what I'm doing. Now let's get started. Oh, if I go fast, you can always rewind too. All right, 4.13 covers what happens when you take a molecule that already has a dipole moment and stick it into an electric field. A good example of this is the water molecule, which in a previous video I got completely wrong and I'm just now realizing it. It's kind of a Mickey Mouse shape. What happens is the electrons from the hydrogen, the Mickey Mouse ears, um, flow down towards this way. So you have a net negative charge down here and a net positive charge up here. Okay, And altogether, of course, the, the total charge is zero. The, the monopole term of the potential produced by such a thing would be zero, but you have this dipole moment that points um, this way, okay, from the negative to the positive, right? And so what happens when you stick something like this into an electric field, right? Well, you can kind of think of this as a small physical dipole. We have a negative charge and a positive charge, and you know, you have this as the p-vector. And if we subject this to a constant electric field where it doesn't vary at all, then you look at the forces that happen and so the top one is going to be pushed in the same direction as electric field and the bottom one is going to be pushed in the opposite direction of electric field by the same magnitude. So um, we can calculate the torque of this because uh, the net force is going to be zero so the, the net force, the sum of the forces so there's no acceleration due to the net forces there, but we do have a torque going on. Um, so the torque could be calculated as the torque on the positive charge. So you have R and pointing to the positive vector across the force on the positive side. And you add in the R to the negative side across the force on the negative side. So this is all basic physics. The, if you take the origin to be the center, then you can do this. You can have uh, the first one is going to R cross F is just um, the S vector. This is S vector as well. P is the charge multiplied S vector. S vector over 2 cross the force is Q times the electric field. And then you take a minus because it's going to be negative charge from the negative side. S vector over 2. And I lied to you. It's going to be a plus because this is a minus cross minus Q E vector because this is pointing we're taking the origin to be this point right in the middle there okay and you add it all up and it's going to give you basically let's see this is going to be positive positive so you have two of these guys so you get the S vector cross or Q S vector cross E vector which is just the dipole moment cross the uh, across the electric field you put it in. Okay, So that's a good formula there. Memorize that, stick it in your back pocket. Um, save it for a test or something. Um, notice that the torque is such that the dipole moment is trying to align with the electric field. So you take the P cross E, well, that's my left hand, P cross E pointing that way, so it's going to curl it towards that way. Um, and you might be wondering like, well, you know, in the atomic world, these things don't have any resistance. There's no drag or, or friction of any kind. And so this guy would actually just wobble, you know, it just rotate back and forth. But thanks to the fact that atoms really come alone, they're going to bounce off each other. And the general dipole moment, the average dipole moment will align with the electric field when it's subjected to an electric field. Um, the other interesting thing that happens is when you have a non-uniform field, so let's do the same thing. So we have our P vector, we have our plus, we have our minus, and the, let's say that the um, electric field is down here, it's very strong, and over here it may be in a different direction and not as strong. Okay, so it's not quite equal. So we're going to have the E vector on the minus side and the E vector on the plus side, which might be very um, similar to each other, but they're different, right? And we can say that the E plus 
minus the e minus, oh, that's a minus, not a plus, please, is equal to the change in the e vector from the not minus to the, the plus of the of the, um, the dipole moment. So calculating the net force on this is just the sum of the two forces. So the net force is going to be q e plus vector plus q e minus vector. Well, that's just q or minus, minus, minus that. Um, so the, that's just q e plus minus e minus minus, I did it again, which is just q times the change in the electric field between the minus and the plus points of that. Well, what's the change in the electric field? We can rewrite that as um, we can say the DE and I know I'm not being very rigorous here. Um, I'm sure you can work out for yourself uh, why this is the case that it is. It is just going to be the gradient no, not the gradient of E. The, oh, this is weird. Okay, let's do it the way the book does it. Okay, so he starts off and he says in the X direction, we get basically the gradient of the X component um, dot the S vector, right? S vector is the one that points from the negative to the, the positive, right? So we're going from this point to this point we're saying what is the gradient of the x component and the y vector the y component is the same thing okay and so on and so forth and what you end up with is the vector itself is given by s dot the gradient times the e vector okay and so we can rewrite this this formula as equal to and he kind of rearranges terms here he has a good reason for it. P dot the the the, the this is an s vector. P dot that uh, del del, which is just q times dot s dot p dot times the del vector times the electric vector. So the net force acting on the particle is given by that. It still experiences a torque, of course. The last thing that's interesting to consider is how much does the dipole moment change, given you know whether it's a it's a variable electric field or electric field you'd expect that if it's already lined up it stretch a little more and you know that'd be correct but the truth is is these two effects on polarized molecules molecules that sitting in no electric field have a dipole moment uh, really outweighs whatever change to the dipole moment is given the electric field so that's how that's what happens when you take an already polarized molecule. Remember, atoms don't have a dipole moment just sitting by themselves without an electric field. And stick in an electric field. You get a torque. And if it's an electric field that varies pretty rapidly, you'll get a net force as well. So, hope that helps. Take care. Bye.